Hey everyone, in the news this week, there were amusing scenes at the World Snooker Championship as a pigeon flew onto the table, although some of us are old enough to remember when a parrot won the tournament in 1991. There was a story about Double Decker on fire in Glasgow, which is certainly a step up from the old fried Mars bar. And the UN have declared David Attenborough, quote, champion of the earth. Although I happen to miss the fight, perhaps it was on pay-per-view. He does seem a bit old to be doing that sort of thing, although I guess that never really stopped anyone in the later Rocky films. Anyway, the main news story, of course, was the French election. Emmanuel Macron won, and that wasn't terribly surprising. Although the way that the election was spun by the media was strange to say the least. Marine Le Pen advocated for much higher taxes, reducing the retirement age, and a wave of socialist spending, and therefore was portrayed as a right-wing extremist. In contrast, Emmanuel Macron is an arch-capitalist and his next Goldman Sachs banker, who was therefore portrayed as a leftist candidate by a sympathetic media. In many respects, that's far from the maddest set of ideas to emerge from France in the past couple of hundred years. Although, to be honest, neither of their ambitions boarded well for anyone else other than possibly the French public, and it's all a moot point given that Emmanuel Macron is about as likely to enact any of his policies in the French public as I am mine. It's been several years after all since the Gilets jaunes put a stop to the traction on his green agenda, and if people are buying fewer cars it's more likely because of the endless industrial action bringing factories in France to a standstill on a regular basis. It is of course important to remember that despite the fact that Emmanuel Macron won the election, nearly half the country voted for a candidate that the media had actively spent months portraying as some sort of modern Elizabeth Bathory character. Surely it must raise a couple of eyebrows that despite the entire French establishment orchestrating a propaganda war against Le Pen, she still won nearly half the electorate. You have to wonder what would have happened if they'd remained neutral. But France isn't really historically the sort of place that sits on the political fence about things. De Gaulle famously said, how can anyone govern a nation that has 246 types of cheese? And of course, typically, Russia was blamed for everything, because of course they are. The place is portrayed as some kind of skillful, calculating adversary that schemes things all around the world and undermines democracy through skill in a professionally run espionage service. Except these days, it seems like they'd struggle to run a bath, let alone a subversive anti-democracy campaign. Le Pen was on the ballot because her views are highly popular, not because Vladimir Putin orchestrated it. Putin's army has this last couple of months shown itself to be unable to win a war against a country with a GDP about the size of Birmingham. They constantly attempt to poison people, yet somehow fail every time. Sergei and Yulia Skripal are very much still alive, by the way. And Putin seems to have a success rate when it comes to that akin to the coyote in the old Roadrunner cartoons. It honestly makes you wonder if the Cold War could have ended in the 60s, if Khrushchev had been nudged into starting a traditional land war, you know, before getting bogged down and leading to the USSR collapsing, long before the Beatles could sing about being back in it. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.